Hello, everybody. I felt like Dr. Mick today. Thought I'd do that little intro. How you doing? This is Macola and Housen, Uncensored. Back like I never left today. What happened? You were sat in my chair last week. Uh, Joe, and actually there was almost another personnel change this morning, wasn't there? Yeah, was. <laughs> Joe messaged me like, don't want to make this a habit or anything, but um, shall we do Macola and Housen Uncensored with me and you? No, no, Joe. It was a one-off. You're not getting back on the top show on the channel every week ever again. Ever again. People weren't happy, Joe. They um, were, actually. I was worried. That's why I made sure I was here today, because I didn't want to give Joe another chance. And then, you know, things move on very quickly. You'll be forgotten about after a week. Yep. We had a, a possible Rona scare at training. Um, turned out to be a false alarm, thankfully. Um, but as it was standing, it was like, yep, no stay for a week. Um, I, was, I was buzzing. But, Joe, it actually it fucks us here in a big time, because at training, we've got Will. We, Great goalkeeper. <laughs> Centre half and left back Will, who's also the producer of all the Paddock FC stuff in this office. You've got Cameron, oh, who's the producer here. Cam also lives with the other editor that we have, Callum, um, which means that they all can't come in. Um, Ronaldo can't come in. Jake, who does graphics for the footy team, he can't come in. I can't come in. And I don't know who would be here to do anything. Mm. So Joe was like, um... As you can tell, everyone that works here just saves on rent by living together in a one-bedroom flat. Um, works out well, though. Ronaldo, Cam, top and tail in with each other. Um, but yeah, it would have been mad. I was expecting to come in not see you, not see anybody. Have a nice, quiet day. And then Joe disappeared. He's proper scared him, isn't he? Wet's the word you're looking for. Yeah, he's, he's wet. He's a wet wipe, like we like to call him. But he's proper scared, Joe is. So... <laughs> Yeah. Prayers for Joel. Anyway. How are you feeling now? Uh, one like equals one prayer. Um, how, you, how are you? I'm fine. And I'm all right in myself as well. Thanks for asking. You're good, you're good in yourself. What do you know? I'm, I don't know anything, to be honest. Um, you've been enjoying all or nothing? Yes. It's good, isn't it? I, I saw what I'm going to call the best tweet to come out of the series so far, which was the Jose's conversation with Danny Rose, and someone had put, right click, sell for any price. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I think that. But <laughs> footy managers, if you don't get that. But that then is alluding to the fact that Danny Rose was wrong. I felt Danny Rose was right, and I could have seen that com conversation happening with many United players as well. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly, it he was is the, right. It's a bit a where he said, "Hold on, his shit every week. He still starts. I play shit once, and I'm never back." And it's like, and he was right against Liverpool, which yeah. is obviously as a fullback, that's a tough ask. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yeah, I, undoubtedly you can just like copy paste four, five, six different United mm. players into that situation, and the conversation's exactly the same. You brought me on against Liverpool. I didn't get a kick. Yeah. Cheers. And he was, but he proper like Mourinho kept saying, "I'm being straightforward with you," but he wasn't being straightforward with you because he, you know how his mind works. He's always thinking, actually, let me keep Danny Rose there, even though I don't want him, just in case shit happens. But really, he needed to just say, "Bro, I don't rate you." Clearly. Like, I just don't rate you. Because he tried to sign him at United. Mm, he tried Actively. to sign a few as well, didn't he, from there? Uh, Dyer, um, Alderweireld. He definitely likes Dyer. He does like Dyer. Which is hilarious, because then after he's bigged him up like that, and then he subs him, what was it, 30 minutes in or something? But I feel like Mourinho like, probably felt Dyer will take it better than someone else. Yeah. Um, and, and he may... Actually, watching it, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're a hypocrite, you, you, you wanted rid of him, and I did want rid of him, and I... Still would want rid of him. And if I was a Spurs fan, I wouldn't want him in the job. But as me as a personality, me as a person watching him, I would love to work for him. I would love to play for him. You know, someone that just is a cunt, calls you a cunt, makes you feel like you can take on the world. And just, yeah, I, I like that. But you don't get to see much about his style of play in it, which I don't like. It's probably the, the amount of access that it got is mental, mm. especially into his office. So there must have been some considerations. All right, if you have that, you ain't seeing my tactics. Mm. There's got to be. You, you, you've got, you can't even see how we fully anal analyse it. You can't see how we fully prepare for this. There's got to be some consideration. Because if you were watching that, you'd think, he doesn't really work on tactics. No. But obviously he does. You, know, you just never get to see them. They have their meetings and everything where they oh, obviously we've work. We've got on a similar thing, thing here with yeah, yeah. what we do with Paddock FC. Uh, new tr a new uh, episode of the documentary dropped today. 
We're showing you a lot. We're showing you more than a lot of people would include in the all that. The paddock one's called Nothing or Nothing. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> 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 nothing or fuck off. <laughs> Uh, but some people have been commenting about the certain things that we've talked about, and you're going, you, oh, you're still only seeing snippets. Mm. You know, a lot of the training is, f I'll be honest, fucking boring as a entertainment thing to watch. It's repetitive. It's you know, it's a, a different iteration on something. The conversations that you have individually with players mostly private. Um, you know, we're trying to be as open as is sensible to be. Uh, without literally showing the fucking text messages that you get from players and stuff like mm. that in the aftermath. So, and, and this is amateur Saturday League football. This isn't a Premier League team worth billions. No, so I can understand the considerations and the desires, and I'm sure there was arguments when, when Levy had to... Uh, do you know what? Levy's the ultimate bad Bond guy character, Bond villain character. Um, I can understand that. When Jose probably went for the interview, they was like, look, we've got this fucking documentary being filmed, obviously what's the crack because it didn't show considering how long they were there filming Potch I wanted to see more of that there was no Potch before you know the the breaking up of that team how upset they were when did they start filming it start of the season so they had that footage but they've obviously changed narrative the so it was post yeah, yeah. the Champions League the whole League. season so from the Champions League final yeah. the whole season so, so they would have had he went at Christmas didn't he yeah, so they should have had, like, in the dressing room before his last game or after his last game, and they never had any of that. And it was like... What do you reckon that you, was a... I think that was more to do with Mourinho's a bigger star, isn't he? So we're going to focus it on Jose. Yeah, you, you, you completely... It, it'd be almost like Poch is Spurs and Mourinho's United. If United turn up, you're going to just be like, boom. But I think because of the story of Spurs and those players, I think there would have been a lot of bonds there between them, and it would have been... Interesting to see how that fell away, but maybe a lot of players felt it was embarrassing. And maybe that's the reason why they've not shown that. Because maybe they've looked at that and gone, maybe they've reviewed the footage after it's, they've got it and gone, we can't put this out. Or maybe it then becomes a 20 episode thing and they don't want to do that, do you know what I mean? But I'm hoping in a year or two we get like some leaked footage of Potch's last days because it would have been a big, and it would have been a, that meeting if they filmed that meeting of Potch and Levy. Because you hear Harry Kane after, the day after he says to someone, ah, oh, you just told him to get out. Or something like, you know, pack your things up and go. And, but in front of camera, Levy's saying, I want to be his friend. I want to, you know, I want to. And it's like, well, that yeah, so he's, really a he's a Bond villain for me, Levy. He's mm -hmm. a Bond villain. And He'll turn on Jose as well, I think, soon. But they'll both turn on each other. I, I don't see how this relationship could be sustainable. Um, a manager that will clearly want everything his way and a. a and a CEO who's not going to give you that, um, it will blow up spectacularly. Do you think Jose acted differently than what he would normally do on camera? Or do you feel we're maybe seeing a different Jose? Do you reckon United players are watching this Jose and saying, who the fuck is that guy? Because he seemed to Be take to a change of attitude, didn't he? Before the job. I think he's semi-conscious of it. Like, the, I mean, the clip that's gone around the world is him getting up. Have you seen the edits of it as well? Mm. Where he get, gets up and turns the telly off different yeah. things. Can't um, wait till someone puts one of our fan cams in it. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, lads, but get sorted on that. I think, he's a, I think he's almost acting at those moments. I think there's times when he loses himself. Like when he's on the training ground and he's getting involved in training and he's having a kick about, I think he forgets then. Mm. But I think there's times when he's like, come on me. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I liked him, though, from, from that, what we saw, but I don't feel that was the same Jose United got anywhere near. And I think there are moments where he slips back into... He's trying to be this new guy, this positive guy, and this guy that's going to uplift Spurs. But oh, it's a mask. He slips back into the, well, the I, old Jose. I'm still look. very keen to see how much of his success was Farrier. Mm. Mm. I think it's, it, it's unfair, though. It's like... It's like saying how much of Fergie's success was down to Kiros, and it, I think that's ultimately unfair. Especially when you see, you know, the manager ultimately is the main man; he's the figurehead. And I think even if you did have a good coach, yes, they'll impact you, and their ideas will play a part in how you set up and how you do things. But I, I, I don't think that's. I think football changing is the biggest thing that's affected him, and I think I don't think his tactics have really changed massively. I don't think he's changed. 
And I think f football has. The but people have changed in football within the not... game. They're richer. They're, you know, they they're a younger crowd. Like, not, not you can't really be angry, angry, angry with someone like all the time anymore. Right. If you forget that you were just talking about Jose, that was Fergie in 2005. That's what people were saying then. But he wasn't angry, 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 angry all the time. He wasn't coming out in press, laying into his own players. He wasn't doing those things. Well, no, I think Jose's always had a more... You could say Fergie struggled to adapt. Sort of attitude. You could say Fergie struggled to adapt, and that would be fair comparison in a sense. But, and then that's where his assistant managers came in and maybe helped him. But in terms of the man management side of things, Fergie did so well. Because you, look, when he came in in 1986, in, uh, into United, not into football, football then, players going to pubs after mm. games, before games, do, like the crap, like it's different. Even the, the type of person that you're dealing with and, and he managed to like just go through that change. It's, it's crazy when you think about it because he must have been looking at these people thinking like, bro, oh, Kieran Richardson's got a fucking Bentley, you know? Yeah, and yeah. it's like, You've now got to change. Like back then, it would have been only the top duns would have one of them cars, and or not even. <clears throat> like yeah, not even. But the 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 adaptation Fergie went through was to always constantly refresh his backroom staff. Jose was the opposite. He had the same group of generals wherever he went. He carried his little team, and now he's lost his number one guy that was with him for nearly twenty years. I think that plays a massive part. Fergie Fergie came into it with. Was it Archie Knox, his first one? I don't know if that was the first one at like St Mirren and that mm, lot. But like, been. he had Name Archie Knox, uh, certainly at Aberdeen, and I think he came to Aberdeen. United for a bit, and then I think he was offered the job. I think he might have even been offered the, the top job at, at Aberdeen. Well, he went Archie into the Knox. World Cup, didn't he, just before United? Yeah. Is that when Jack Steen passed mm -hmm. away? That's mad, isn't it? Because you, you, you wouldn't think Fergie managed that at a World Cup. Mm. Do you remember when people used to call for Fergie to be manager of England? How do you think he would have done? I think he would have won a trophy, for example, with Fenn's team. Okay, what year? Let's say Fergie, when he was supposed to quit in 2001, quit. And he took England to World Cup 2002. And then two years, yeah, a year later, they managed to get him out just for the tournament. Wins or, it. You think he wins it? In 2002. Which one was South, South, South Korea? Japan, South Korea? Uh, 2002. Germany? Yeah. No. Did Japan, South Korea? Oh, he, what he a football that. that was. He wins way. that. Who's in his team? David Beckham. Paul Scholes. Real. Rio, he wins that. Gerard Lampard. Mm, Gerard was just emergent. Uh, 2000, yeah, too early. 2002. Who was that? England's team in 2002? Uh, I want to say Sol Campbell and Rio was yes. at centre half. I want to say, was Ashley Cole at left back or was it like Trevor Sinclair? No, it was Chris Powell. Danny Mills? Because sure. Ryan Giggs was, uh, sorry, Gary Neville was injured, wasn't he? Danny Mills Not played against um, Brazil. Trevor Sinclair went. Danny Mills played against Brazil. Trevor Sinclair went. He did well. Nicky Butt was player of the tournament. Um, <laughs> There's your midfield then. <laughs> Old Nicky fucking Butt was player. Trevor Sinclair <laughs> left wing. Beckham scores Butt. Yeah, Fergie had about a fucking field day with that. Who do you have up front? Michael Owen and... Yeah, so here's the full squad. Um, David James. Pardon. David James, Nigel Martin, David Seaman. Wayne Bridge, Wes Brown, Sol Campbell, Ashley Cole, Rio, Martin, Keon Mills, Southgate, Beckham, Bott, Cole, Dyer, Hargreaves, Skulls. Fucking Sinclair. Robbie Fowler went when he was at Leeds. And, what? And Darius. I thought it was Sheringham and Owen. Yeah, he'd have played. Right, because he Sheringham knew Owen's Sheringham. A good partnership. Because he knew uh, uh, Sheringham. Yeah, he'd have played. Sven loved Darius for Sal, didn't yeah. he? I you don't had, remember. You had a story was about it Heskey and Owen that he played up front in that? I don't really remember. Yeah, Hesky it would have been played. Hesky and Owen and Teddy coming off the bench. Yeah. And Vassal coming off the bench. For Owen Hargreaves. Owen Hargreaves is good, actually. In that you one. could play Owen Hargreaves sitting. Joe Cawley played on the left, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fergie has a field day with that team. But, yeah. It's, it's... But then we don't get Ronaldo era United. No, I wouldn't. I'm not saying I would want him to be England manager. No, I'm just Of saying. course not. But just would like to know how he'd get on as England manager. Or in an international tournament? Here's or? the thing with international tournaments, in my opinion. They're about, can you keep the lads happy? That's more about man management mm. and having the most basic plan A ever. I don't think you've got multiple plans because I don't think there's enough time to work with them. You get like two weeks pre-tournament and then that's you in it. And then you just train, recover, train, recover, train, recover, train, recover, fucked off home. 
So I think you've got a very basic system that hopefully you've had a bit of time to work on in a build-up and then you can implement it. But the man management, knowing when someone needed a rest and when they didn't, knowing how to motivate. So Alex Ferguson's the best on the planet with that, especially mm. in 2002. Mm. Especially 2002. Mm. So I think, yes. But who's his assistant? Steve McLaren. I would have brought him with him. Carlos Quiros. It wouldn't have been a foreigner. You can't have a Scot and a Portuguese, man. You've got to have a Scot and an English. Right. Some would say you can't have a Scot. Like, that was the whole reason why he never yeah. did it. But, like, you know. Just I think he says in one of his books, didn't he? It? It, it wouldn't have I would have been allowed back in Scotland. Yeah, he just wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Which is fair. Yeah, it is. It is. But, and I wouldn't have wanted him to go. But that was a weird time when we thought we were going to get Sven. Um, and there were pictures of him at Old Trafford and things like that. Yeah, he was done, wasn't it? it? How do you reckon Sven would have done? It would have got sacked after a bit. So it was 2002. We'd literally just signed... Rio, Rude, Veron, fuck me. Um, he the played, team he was had, he managed there. Veron at Lazio, didn't he? Sven. I wonder. Joe, you know, sometimes you see managers lining signings up before they get yeah. there. I wonder. No, no, no. Fergie don't take next man signing. He don't take next man signing. He didn't even prepare for his departure the second time around. Like, he ain't preparing for his departure the first time around. Mm. Oh, God. Um, yeah, wonder where we would have been as a club after that as well, because his departure came twelve years later. We would have been in, in the six Roman seven come years, four years later. In the six seven years post Fergie, where we sit now, I think if he'd have left then, where we are as a club now wouldn't have been as bad. But we obviously we wouldn't have achieved the success that we achieved under him. But it wouldn't be as bad as it is now. I don't know, you know. No, I'm because look at the team. You had a, a, a fucking young Rio Ferdinand in there. How do you know half these lads don't want to dip? Well, After Matt... Sven fucks up? No, you don't. Like, Kino but Sven at the time fucking, comes in with a fucking... Yeah. And, all right, yeah, but you still, leave. 2002, you still had three years of Roy Keane. You still had a young Scholes, a young Giggs. You had Rio Ferdinand. Like, mm. there was, you had a, a new Rude. Like, maybe you don't sign Ronaldo, but maybe you actually find a system that Rude on this throw. Who would Sven have signed his first line in? Heskey. <laughs> No, nah, because you can't take into account. You have that to look at well. who he signed at Lazio. Did he bring like the likes of Crespo and stuff into Lazio? Who were his first signings at City? He brought in like Ilano. You can't, you can't no, I'm not it. saying he would have brought them, but you can look at the type of players he brought in. No, he brought in Ilano, didn't he? City had just been promoted when he got there. So that was, like, yeah, you've got true. to put it on that frame, not the team that recently won the Champions League true. a couple of years ago. No, I think you look at his signings at like Lazio, because he signed some top players at Lazio. And I think he, he probably goes along... That route because United spent money then, and you might never have got. Oh, that's the one. That sliding doors moment. Does Fergie fall out with JP McManus? Do the Glazers oh. ever come in? Maybe, maybe we've cracked it. Maybe, maybe Sven if, coming in, we own the club by now as fans. If we didn't miss out on Sven, everything would have been all right. How mad's that? That's basically what we're saying today. Oh, God. <laughs> Sven, you're an Ericsson. Is he the best thing? I've been tweeting a lot about Southgate this week. I don't really care for England as much as I did as a kid. I think my heart went out of it after World Cup 98 and then it was further cemented after Euro 2000. Um, but I still take an active interest in it and I still watch him and want him to do well. But they won't do well under Gareth Southgate. No, I mean, he, he failed his only challenge in the World Cup that he got. The only challenge. Yeah, like got. someone said to me, okay, so I tweeted something about it. So they said, well, he got you to the semi final. Did it? Panama, Tunisia, <laughs> Sweden. If, you, if me and you were managing England, we'd be expected to beat them teams. Yeah. Like in that tournament. And then we lost against the first good team we come up against. And we should have beaten. Yeah. He's not good enough. He's not good enough. Sorry to say. But he had a waistcoat. And I just feel like because everyone's doing this thing where oh, the English media's nice now, we've been nice to our national team, and so they're not going to put pressure on him. You've seen Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher yesterday talking constantly about his three at the back. Fuck the formation. All of that. Southgate's a dud. We're wasting tournaments, and we've got such a... How are you starting Dyer Rice and Calvin Phillips, or Dyer Rice and Winks, or Dyer Rice and... And you've got Jack Grealish and... Madison's and oh, what is going on? I think what England really lack is a, a pure good manager. For a, well, apart from that, a pure thoroughbred box to box number eight, like your energy, like a Robbo, you know. And obviously, there's a lot of lack of them, like a Keane, you know, like 
people think of Keane as like a defensive player. No, he wasn't. He was box to box in his early days. He was like on literally on both edges of both boxes. England don't have anyone that fits in between. They've got loads of number <clears> tens <throat> and loads of number sixes and no number eights. But it's the way he sets up, bro. And, well, you didn't need to stack it with three sixes last night. Against who? Yeah. Who? You could have you could have easily played one six as a ball player and had a couple of attacking midfielders. And un- unleash some of the fucking and talent you, that you've, you've got, got, like Sancho and Greenwood. Like we, had, we had the likes of Rashford and that out, and you still could have played a front four of Kane, Sancho, Sterling, fucking Grealish. Bro, that's Premier League winning stuff. Hmm. What is... Uh, we don't deserve nice things. <laughs> we don't. We genuinely don't. Like, we had Michael Carrick, this footballer, this amazing footballer that would have provided us balance to Gerard and Lampard and all these guys... And we overlooked him if he was Spanish and Italian. He would have been playing every week. Like, it was a joke. It, it was a People in the comments are, are going to fucking jump all over this comment. But I don't give a fuck. Michael Carrick should be in that conversation with who was the best. Because Paul Scholes is the best. That's a given, right? So who was the second best midfielder of that generation? People will overlook Michael Carrick. And mm. I don't know why. I think for good reason. What? I th- I'll tell you why. One, because... Scholes is the best from United. Gerrard's the best from Ch- Liverpool. He's the best from Chelsea. So you're always going to have that now, the best from those clubs coming against each other. But I think, as a footballer, Carrick, what he did was very underrated and his passing ability was great and his reading of the game was great. But Gerrard and Lampard had more to their game. No, they had goals to their game. And that yeah, is it. I, I, they had more that, to their game. That man. ball that <clears throat> Steven Gerrard's famous from. If the, you... the 60 yarder out for a throw in or a goal kick, right? Michael Carrick does them and fucking completes them time in, time out. Michael Carrick had a fucking range of passing, second only to Paul Scholes in that United midfield. Uh, I think, like, every Scholes needs a Carrick. Gerard needs an Alonso. Like, they all need that, that guy next to them. They all need, Lampard needed Makaleli, Essie, They all need that guy next to them to allow them to play. Carrick's that guy to allow them to play. He's not them. No, I still think he's, he's a not them. A better footballer. He, he holds on to the ball. Okay, he didn't shoot enough. He but that's all they've got. Scored. They've only got goals over him. I don't know, man. Gerard's a better leader than him as well. What the fuck does that mean? But it does mean something, especially in midfield, bro. That's the why we I have talk, to question. That's part of what we talk about, Robbo and Kino, when no, we talk about them. Because leaders win things. He charged around like a dickhead and was right. He okay, was Stevie me. I know go, that. All right, we, he won the Champions League. Fucking did he? Because I'll tell you, Diddy Aman and fucking Jabby Alonso won them that Champions League. Steven Gerrard, make it all about me performance isn't what a fucking Steven leader does. Me. They was down in that saying, final because man, he I'm can't just... fucking defend. I love Michael Carrick. He smells beautiful. He looks beautiful. He plays beautiful. But come on. Uh, no. Come on. Come on. And all the people are like, oh, you're just biased. Of fucking course yeah, I am. We're biased. We have to be biased. But just... Don't be stupid. No, it's not stupid. I think people need to actually open their brain. Stop listening to fucking Sky Sports, right? Open your brain. Open your fucking brains, right? Stop listening to Sky Sports and watch. Because actually, if you want to have a fucking conversation about the Sky greatest Sports, if you still Premier League midfielders, up, yeah. Roy Keane is the answer. And then probably Yaya fucking Toure needs to be at least into the top three in that conversation. Fuck Steven Gerrard. Yaya's, Yaya's. Fuck Steven Gerrard. Yaya gets underrated because he's African. Yeah. Steven Gerrard is nowhere near above Roy Keane. And nowhere above y- Yaya Toure. I saw someone tweet the other day. He's not even above Vieira. That Didier Drogba's... He's not above Vieira, is he? Who? Gerrard. No. No, correct. No. There you go. No. Next fucking he is question. He Carrick, though. I disagree with you. He is above Carrick. If I'm building a team, Michael Carrick's in there for that self. That's because... That's because, listen. That's because cunt. Skulls, Gerrard Lampard, you can pick one of them, but then you have to pick the balance... You have to have the Carrick. Like, every Scholes, Gerard Lampard needs a Carrick. But they're the better players for that reason. The only thing he didn't have was goals. And people overrate that side of the game. Keeping hold of the fucking ball. He used to score when he shot as well. Yeah. Remember watching his testimonial when he dabbed? When he <laughs> scored? I'm just thinking, why didn't you shoot more often than not? And Roma scored two. Probably the last times he ever shot for United. When you he scored against what, City, remember in the... What did he win as a player? Munich game. Only three fucking back-to-back titles. Anyone else in that fucking list say that? Oh, no, was the answer. What do you mean? Mm. But what you're saying, would United have still won those leagues if we put Gerrard in instead of Carrick or Lampard in instead of Carrick? I think the answer is yes. Fucking hell no. Without offering what Michael Carrick offers us. I know, but I'm just... 
Carrick's sick, but I think kind of, you know. Gerard Absolutely not. Do you know what you get? You get the England situation. Where you go, oh, why is this, isn't this working? Yeah, yeah, Carrick needed to play. Carrick needed to play. Ask Dean, me and Dean, yeah? Me and Dean, we, we used to sit on the stairs at, at college, yeah, arguing with all these geezers, yeah, about Carrick being the man to free up Gerard and Lampard around 2006 World Cup. And they weren't having none of it, bro. And I remember after just saying, you're like pricks. That's it's why match of the day players. Bro. Same motherfuckers that thought fucking Micka Richards was a top class defender because his positioning was shit and then and made, he would always make And then made the Micka Richards tackles. come out and say to Kino, remember my breakthrough, yeah? Kino was like, what? <laughs> When was that? <laughs> so they, they, I love that. Right. Like they, didn't they buy him from Leeds or Birmingham or something? At 16? He is from Birmingham. I think they... They bought him from... I think it was Leeds. I want to say Leeds. He's from Birmingham. Because I remember... I remember his first interview. He played in the FA Cup game against Villa, didn't he? And then he swore in his interview. That's the first time I remember seeing Micka Richards. Well, I think they bought him at 16. It was either Birmingham or Leeds. I want to say Leeds for some reason. I might be wrong on that. But City, because they've had no fucking academy players that have done Actually, fuck all. He is from Yorkshire, isn't he? Micah Richards. They've named a fucking suite at their stadium, the Micah Richards suite. Oh, no, he's born in Birmingham, isn't he? It was at Leeds, his junior club. Oldham. Leeds, Oldham. He was at Leeds, then he went to Oldham, City. Right. Can you, do, which Italian club did he spend some time at on loan? Micah Richards. Vicenza? Fiorentina. The Viola. Wouldn't have fucking known that. Producer Chris knows that. He does know that. He likes a bit of the viola, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they messed up my bet once. So Have I you seen that? Texted um, like, you shit team. There's a documentary. It might be on Netflix. It's definitely on YouTube about a uh, football historical. <laughs> yeah, they haven't got an Adam Johnson suite, have they? <laughs> no. I don't know why. He let, you know, that was a bad year for Adams, wasn't it? Um, the, um, that football historical that goes on. You never seen it? Never heard of Calcio it. Calcio historical. Never heard of it. So it's like, um, it's played in the town square in Florence. The four districts of Florence come together. They cover it in sand and hay. And they wear these weird fucking uniforms. They've played it every year since like 15 old fuck knows. Oh, is it one team against one or four, all four teams at one? They play a semi-final on like the Thursday. And then on the Saturday. It's football? It's not really. There is, there is a football. So there's a football. The nets are about this high. And about 50 metres long. Um, at both ends of the square. And then they basically have a line of forwards through the middle. And they sort of just have a punch up and have like a bit of an MMA oh, fight. That's sick. And then basically your forwards have a fight until you get a bit of a numerical advantage. Then it becomes a bit of a mixture of like American football and rugby where they try and move the ball up. And they give it the speedy guys to try and throw it into the net like handball style. Um, but it's called historical football or fo Calcio Storica. Um, they up till a few years ago they used to allow people to go and are there videos of it. this on, online? They are. Oh, I'll have to check this out later. Sir. But then they recently because it was getting a bit touristy, they just was like, no, 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 fuck off. Local sport for local people. We have cheese racing and stuff here, don't we? Yeah, nothing as cool as that. That's fucking mint, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it looks bananas. Good, good fun, that, isn't it? Yeah. Like. Running down a hill, and then the you literally own your city afterwards. So I think there's you are um, you win the city. Well, like they go out and fucking have it, don't they? Do they still All give people keys to cities and things like that? Yeah, but I don't actually know what that means. Because Marcus Rashford's probably in line for the key to the city, isn't he? Wants to be. Mm. He's he's the future. He can I just say, yeah, I love Marcus Rashford. He how, could never score another goal ever again. How professional and fucking like articulate he is. When all these MPs are coming for him. Do you see what David Vance said the other day? Bro, I just had to tell David. Like, on behalf of Marcus Rashford, I had to tell David Vance to suck his mum because <laughs> I know Marcus Rashford can't do these things. He's not going to come out That's and it. say... He's, he's going to think it. He's going to think, suck your mum. Dane's probably <laughs> going to think it. Look at this prick. <laughs> but they can't do it. So we have to take to the streets, the Twitter streets, and say what, what needs to be what said. I said? I think I said something along the lines of, who the fuck are you, you cheeky gammon-faced twat? Yeah, I've seen that as well. I love that everyone piled onto him, but then that's what these kind of people want. I don't even know who he is, apart from the times he pops up on the timeline being an absolute knob. And I know people probably think that about me, but... <laughs> 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 I'm, you know, I'm not dangerous. Um, yeah, I mean, like, fucking... How articulate he is, is an absolute fucking credit. 
because I couldn't fucking with with politicians coming up and just asking mm. inane bullshit like oh so we got to feed all the fucking kids you didn't have anything to fucking say oh so tax need to go and pay for feeding your kids what? you had no issue with people fucking getting their restaurant bills it's paid the by same, the tax it's the same you man fucking dick look and I, I, I I'm behind Harry Maguire by the way I got a new F- idea I'm fully behind Harry Maguire by the way but it's the same man that was like oh he's only on holiday having a little drink and oh yeah we'll, that will gas that up that will say oh Marcus Rashford uh, stick, stick to football fuck politics and that by the way, feeding kids ain't politics. If you think feeding hungry children is political, you can... And not only this, mate, we are about to hit a fucking, like, Great Depression-level fucking recession, potentially. Because no cunts in a job, and every cunt keeps getting locked up every couple of weeks. Like, the economy is... Fu- There's going to be some businesses that just never come... A lot of businesses that go and never come back. Mm. And there might be some industries that go and never come well, back. Well, I mean, look... In this country, anyway, before Corona... Think of the strippers! Think of them. In this country, before the Rona, we had people that were out here hungry anyway. Look, I, I used to benefit of, of school dinners, uh, free meals, dinner tickets, things like that back in the day. I needed them, bro. I used to want to be on a packed lunch. I used to ask my mum all the time, and she used to say, I can't afford it. Do you know we, I can't I can't afford it. She used to have little jobs, and my dad used to have... You know, we've got everything there. We've got a lovely family. We've got love. We've got... But sometimes you, you can't do things that other people can or you skip meals or whatever because you think, oh, I don't want to stress mum out or I don't want to do this. That's how it is, isn't it? That's how it is in a lot of places for a lot of people, not just black, not just brown, not just white. Like Everybody deals with this kind of shit. And in England, you see it a lot. Like I see it. And I'm a working class person who's grown up around people. You are. We all see it with our own eyes, isn't it? And I think some people, sometimes you just have to have a little bit of empathy sympathy for people and and realize that even if it's that person's fault for the situation they're in sometimes someone just needs a hand you get me mm. and we're talking about kids here people saying oh the parents this that all right yeah but sometimes what about the kid get, brother's still hungry you get me people get born to fuck up parents yeah i was gonna say something then that'll probably be a bit harsh sorry Cam. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what i mean like yeah, you're right. Like some people are fucked up, and maybe they should have had their kids the, the age that they had them, but they did. At the end of the day, you should judge a society on how it deals with those that are vulnerable. If you was a guy that was like, "Yeah, fucking buzzing, let's go and do the eat out to help out thing," and then you're like, "My tax shouldn't go and pay for hungry kids." Well, you, they've just paid to feed you, and you didn't need that. You All went right. to a restaurant and got half off, and you're fine with that. But you don't want to feed hungry kids. All right, let, you, let you. your tax go to the break, the tax breaks for the rich and the wealthy, and all these Tories nonces that are doing what they want with the peas. Just do that, then, innit? I mean, rather than the people that contribute to society. How many comments we just got saying stick to football, lads? I don't give a shit, bruv. Come tweet me as well. I'll tell you that. I don't give a shit. It's I not am, that, innit? I'm like, Two lads who work in a fucking Uncensored. car garage, yeah, let's say, mechanics, mm. good skill job, yeah, mm. sitting there having a brew, they mm. can talk politics. No, no, like, oh, Keith, shut the fuck up, mate. It's, it's, like, it's like Gary Lineker had a little tete a tete with Gary Lineker the other day. It's not like you. You see that? But I like him. And it's like people started laying into him under the comments, like, I fucking hate Gary Lineker. <laughs> and I was like, I like him. Like, he's, he's not bad, he's harmless. But I just thought the Lionel Messi stuff was a bit cringe. The way people are going on about Yeah, Messi. it fucking completely is cringe. It completely is cringe. Like, people, he's given his life to that. They pay him a million and a half a week. And juiced him up, allegedly. Well, I think they've admitted it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Like, oh, oh, well, they've admitted it to so, a certain Hold on. When, so what threshold do you have to pass for you to now be able to do what you want to a football club? Could Giggs do what he By wanted? By the sounds of it, five Ballon d'Ors. Could Giggs do what he wanted? Because that's what people always... He won five Ballon d'Ors for them. He won all these titles for them. Yeah, uh, uh, that was his job. Who gave him the opportunity? Who gave him the chance? Who developed him? Who did all... It's, like, look, I, I don't want to side with Neither side clubs. does either side the other thing. There was a contract, for fuck's sake. He was like, yes, I will play for you. And they was like, cool, we'll give you 50 quid a week. He was like, well, make it 1.5 million and we'll talk. So then he paid. they pay him 1.5 million. They get the player who uh, has been... Nearly the best player in the world for a lot of time. 1.5 so, million a week. Like, they, they owe him nothing. He technically owes them nothing as far as I'm concerned. But don't fucking defend him like he give his life up to go and work in a oh, fucking poor Messi. monastery or something. Got to stay at Barcelona. Can't come to play at the Etihad. 
Oh. What is it? <laughs> like, how can you be that bothered? Like, it's that way. sorry, that way. How can you be that bothered? Like, I, I don't get it. Old Trafford. How can you be that bothered by? Yeah, let's see if you can pinpoint someone, the office. Someone not being Old Trafford. That's it. Tenerife. <laughs> <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> Bit of Peter K for the lads. Tenerife. Scotland. Um. Premier League starts soon. Scotland's that way. Premier League starts soon. Uh, does it? Because then we've got another international break in October. How, uh, uh, should we have a sweepstake? This is a bit fun. Sweepstake. How many postponements because of the Rona first weekend? Zero. I want to say one. I'm going to say zero. Because they've, they've done the tests already this week. I reckon they're getting another one today or tomorrow. If you've got people like Mason Green or Phil Ford and me in Bears in old times, then might be a few Right, can I just say, down. if you was a United fan and you was like, listen, they've Get let England lads. down, they've let United down, go fuck yourself, right? Because this is the fucking club which birthed the world George Best. This is the club which birthed the world Eric Cantona, who was supposedly an absolute fucking elite level shagger, right? And do I even need to mention Dwight York and Ryan Giggs? What would Fergie have done? Fuck all is what he would have done. Absolutely fuck all is what he would have done. He'd be asked that they got kicked out of England, right. of course. But can I just ask, where was the fucking outrage in 1996, <laughs> arguably with one of the best performances England have <coughs> ever had on home soil? They went to Hong Kong for... Why Hong Kong? They went to Hong Kong just before the tournament started and then they fucking wrecked a flight on the way home in VIP. Bottles of vodka down the next pre-9-11 so you could do this shit. Pre now, like fucking vodka down next dentist chair where you get held back and they just pour alcohol in your mouth. Gaza come off with like a collar and no shirt. Like McManaman was just drenched. Sheringham was fucking drenched. I remember the pictures coming the out. The entire of that. team just got fucked up. I mean, to be fair, what a night out that might have been. In team, in team clothing, right? None of them got kicked out of the team. And guess what happened? Gaza scores a fucking rate goal against Scotland and they celebrate now, taking got, the piss out of that fucking thing. I got it this time around in terms of, you know, the, the only thing is the coronavirus thing. That's the only issue, I think, in terms of they didn't do anything illegal. But they didn't do anything immoral. They didn't do anything. Did you see what the, the restrictions are in it's Iceland, wasn't it? You've got to get a test just to... You have to, they have to get a, a, a clean test to enter the country, for one. Uh, and there's... There's not much they weren't restrictions. About that, no, they weren't. They weren't, about <laughs> they weren't thinking about that. Phil Folden never went to Mason Greenwood. Yeah, we shouldn't meet these birds. And then Mason went, well, actually, Phil, <laughs> the testing in Iceland's quite rigorous, you know. All these girls are going to be actually tested. Not, there's actually not that much um, restrictions in Iceland. <laughs> uh, oh, they all, they weren't a, until weekend. The booking restrictions. There's restrictions everywhere now, isn't it? I wanted to go Portugal and all that. But looks like part. Italy's got fans in. Thousand fans. We're get, we were supposed to be looking at it in October, but now we've us going back on lockdown. And Did all you that. know? Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this. Fuck it. United have contacted people who hold boxes. That's so a Spurs. Right. Okay. But well. you can you can understand that. I know people are going to say money, 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 and it. But you can in a box if it's you arrive with ten people yeah. who are your family or well, no, they've got a limit. Five or something. Something like that, yeah. So they're waiting to find out the full thing. So is. that makes sense. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say, oh, it's all for the fucking money. Partly it is, but secondly, it makes sense. Well, they're it's isolated. more manageable, yeah. They're isolated, yeah. So it's wank, um, but yeah, you know who. I was chatting to him yesterday and saying, so uh, am I in your box then for the fucking opening game of the season? And he went, after see. He goes, about 300 people just messing with the same thing. Yeah, that wasn't. <laughs> yeah, because we, we've obviously waited for it to find out when we can renew, or well, when we should do, have mm. to renew our tickets. We still don't no know. No renewal date yet or anything? Is it important for this? Well, there's a, yeah, it's something that's just popped up in the Stratford group about United will let 12,000 fans into Palace. Hang on, that's next week? Yeah. That's not happening. Uh, okay, so we've just had um, word breaking news. I've got it here, I've got it here. So Manchester United hope to let 12,000 fans in for the Crystal Palace game. This is via The Athletic. Mitten, isn't it? Man Shout out Andy uh, Mitten. I can't see the author's name, but I think it's Andy Mitten. Uh, Man United will meet with the authorities on Thursday to put forward their plans to let fans back into Old Trafford for matches Andy Mitten can exclusively really be real. United will discuss the feasibility of allowing 12,000 supporters to attend a trial for their opening league game against Palace on September the 19th. But what I will say is, I imagine this article was written yesterday. 
before we heard the news that we're going back into a lockdown next That's week. That's a good point. And before all of That's that stuff. That's probably going to change everything. So that might change all of that. But, but it did say, I mean, because let's be honest, the government's making it up as they go along. In that thing yesterday, because obviously the, my team started fucking sharing the articles yesterday, which is no more than six anymore. But then if you look into the article, they went, uh, football's going to be excluded. So amateur football, non-league football, like the FA Cup, the Youth Cup, stuff like that that's going on at the moment, they're like, yeah, 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 crack on. Oh, I'm sure we'll find out more Monday. But that, 12,000 people, how can you say you can't have seven of you go to a fucking pub? It says here. 12,000 of you can go watch it. Will the new COVID-19 rules have an impact? It says the last government guidance was that fans would be able to return in limited numbers from October. That was a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. Fans were allowed back to non-league games following testing see, events. See you on Monday is the, is yeah, the, the bottom line. I that. think it's going to be scrapped again. Um, but it's good to see the club are working towards that. Obviously, you were mentioning the commercial boxes. I assume that's invo- included in that 12,000. Well, how many, how many commercial boxes do you reckon? How many do you reckon there is? So about yay big, and there's about go around. Is are they on both tiers in some stadiums? In some in some stands? No, I think some of the ones. So you got that some under the stretty. They sit in the padded seat. You got some of the stretty. It depends if it's is it the private boxes or the I'd imagine the, the it'd lounges, be the boxes, the lounges, not, the, the, not the lounge. not the ones where you go in, have food, and then go into no. the general seating. I don't think no. it'd be that one. No, it'd be private boxes. I reckon it's probably. It'd be like when we went in, fingies, Chevs. Chevrolets. Yeah, well, no, I never went in Chevrolets. I did. L- Lose? Me and Sam Ormwood went in it. Went with Lou? Oh, um, yeah, Jesse's. Jesse's. Um, yeah, it'd be like that. Mm. Um, I would imagine there's probably 100, 120 of them, so that's what, 10,000, uh, 1,000, 1,200. If it's maximum capacity, it might be 600 if they half it. It's not a lot. <laughs> I, I'd go, I, I'm fine with going to games. I'd go, if there was a game tomorrow and it was 70,000, I'd go. Well, yeah. Uh, I just, uh, I've had enough. Because there's, I mean, like, I've got to think, as we found out last night, the implications of, like, 40 people leaving training and, like, shit, lads, where have you all been? We need to, like, trace it. And people's like, oh, I went to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an absolute fucking nightmare. So you can imagine what 70,000 people bomb bursting's going to do. Coffee's going to be illegal, though. Coffee. Sitting there, I- I know. <laughs> Everyone looks at you like, oh, God. It that is, is like... You're going to rather fart out loud than cough nowadays, isn't it? Right. Before, I reckon... Before you'd cough to cover a fart. I reckon you could whip your old chap out, out and it'd have less of a response than you just going... <coughs> yeah, probably not in the family stand, but... Uh, the rest of the Sheffield's fine. Sheffield's fine. Sheffield's right, right, I think we're fucking done here. Uh, uh, cheers for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe. Oh. Um, as I said, go, if you want to go and check it out, and it's a fantastic episode, um, which covers all our pre-season dickens that we got. Um, if you want to go check that out, it's on the Strep for Paddock FC channel. Um, it's good. Adam's done a fucking great job, not him. The other Me. One. I'm a I'm videographer now. I'm amazing. Um, um. <laughs> he's done a good job. And actually, unless Monday changes anything, if you are in the Manchester area and you want to watch some live football, 26th of September, Strep for Paddock have taken over uh, Drawsden Stadium. Did you hear about what happened with Drawsden? Um, I hear that they, they need to raise funds because the, 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 the team's not been scrapped, but they're not in the league next season. They resigned from the league. Um, the league actually didn't accept their resignation, um, gave them a couple of extended deadlines. I think that's now final that they, they accepted their resignation. <clears throat> they might be able to return at the same level next season. Normally, they have to drop a few mm. leagues down, but they might be able to return at the same level next season. We'll find out on that one. I'd be very surprised if that was the case, but it remains to be seen. Uh, Shrepper Paddock are hiring draws and stadiums, so if you want to watch live football in Manchester, currently the only place you can fucking do that is Shrepper Paddock, 2 pm kickoff, 26th of October. United play Brighton on the same day. We'll have it on the big screen, so you can watch Brighton and then you can watch Paddock probably disappoint you um, in the afternoon as well. And can I just throw this one at you? You can watch the match and have a beer on the terrace, which you mm. can't do in the Premier League. And make sure if you go down, you chuck a few in the pot for draws, then yeah, you're yeah. Don't we just are, go we're in there. A, a free ticket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spend an extra few quid on beer. We're not, um, we're not charging entry, so you can just fucking walt- waltz in if you want. And you know, you've you got to stay socially distanced, but if you want to come in and you want to watch some live football, you can do. There will be a voluntary donation, which goes 100% to Drawsden on top of what we're giving them in rent. So, um, obviously, I'm from Drawsden. It's a great little stadium. Um, and I was already in negotiations with Drawsden about the stadium before they went under. 
Um, so hopefully we can put some money behind uh, the counter for them. Um, and obviously what we're giving them in rent, hopefully brings that team back. It's one of the most fucking historical teams in the, in the area. Um, you know, I mean, well, I've heard of them. With, yeah. so. and, and it's 100 metres from a tram stop and there's four pubs in between the tram stop and the fucking ground. There is no excuse to not fucking come and get in the mixer. The 26th. only thing that can stop us now is Boris. So let's hope that bell ends. And there's, there's a good 50% chance that'll happen, <laughs> by the way. But yeah, anyway, if you fancy it, 26th of October, it's a two o'clock kickoff. We'll be watching the Brighton United game um, at the venue and then we'll be kicking off like within 10 minutes of that. So if you want to come and check that out, come and check that out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Laters. Have a nice.